Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. We are not meeting in our building. It's been closed now for two years. I do have a lead on the new building. I hate to get your hopes up, but I do have a lead. Um, it's been a tough go. Um, you could call 612-315-6778 before you would show up. So we do the philosophy of eschatology. John, John Haller, one of my closer friends, is doing every story about everything every week. And he's, I tell you, it's a labor of love. I only do the philosophy and I haven't done anything for a few weeks. I mean, I'll kind of explain why, but we do the philosophy behind the eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence, things like that. We try not to be disparate. We try to harmonize things together. We're Beth Hassan Sabbath fellow. So we have dead birds and storms and another, this is another one. This is my third. So this is 666 in terms of the sixth seal. Now we're years away from the sixth seal, but we have dead birds and storms and I'm going to relate it to the sixth seal. So we'll see what you think of that. So it's been busy lately. They call it fire and fury. Sun has been erupting nonstop this month and giant flares are incoming, scientists say. So we've had this happen. And I'm going to give you proof of it, don't worry. So these are near misses, but still with our electromagnetosphere thinning, and I'll show you what that looks like, you'll see that these storms are more dangerous for us. And you'll see what happens as lightning passes through, plasma kind of pushes down towards us. So anyway, um, this is February 15th and there was a, um, basically they picked up on a, a good size CME, but it erupted outside of our area, not at the earth, but still we had problems. So let's look at this. Uh, yeah, so this Tony Phillips, nice enough fellow, poses no threat. Well, really not really, but kind of, uh, the CME will not hit the earth. It is moving away from, not toward our planet. Okay, yes, you're right. And Ben Davidson agrees with him. The problem is there are other things occurring. So let's look at those things in terms of dead birds. Now you can say, well, dead birds isn't exactly a big sign, but there's a canary in the coal mine issue that we, we should talk about. So this is January and we have hailstorm pounds Egypt as Jews read about that very plague in the Torah. So some of these things are biblical. This hailstorm in the Egyptian town is very interesting, um, describing the plague of hail that hit Egypt over 3,300 years ago. And so there are these 10 plagues of Egypt and there are 10 final plagues from the third, the three woes rather, all the way through the seven vials or bowls. And so it's just interesting that this seems to be caused by by the CMEs, okay? And then this, this is amazing. Do you see what's going on on the left-hand side, upper left there? Those are birds that are flying along and suddenly they're just pushed down. That's electrical people, okay? And so um, they're saying maybe an overcharge from electricity cables, I'm saying solar CME. So the CME, literally just hit them because birds and other animals have magnetite in their their noses or brains in the front of them and that's how they direct to go to places like when they go to capistrano well they need great magnetite and they need to know where they are and god has programmed them to be able to do what they do but the birds are dying right now and they're dying suddenly so it's very interesting i'm blaming that on signs of the increasing sixth seal signs you know so here's another one these are satellite birds okay so elon musk launched 49 satellites in last week's uh, uh, uh spacex launch okay and 40 of them came down <laughs> or burned up so uh, you know it, it's not like birds where they're living creatures um and it's not like elon musk is going to have a tough time finding money for food tonight to feed his seven children by the way i'm thankful that he has seven children um but the main thing is there was a geomagnetic storm and this caused 40 of the 49 to crash. So it's just very interesting. It affects birds and satellites. And these are low level satellites too. So they're not way up there. Um, and so it's look at the geomagnetic storm issues and watch for those going forward. Okay, expect more unexpected severe weather going forward. Weather 2022, new anomalies are growing in the atmosphere and the oceans that will change the weather patterns as we head deeper into the year. Yes, it's not going to be a great year. And so that's European. So it's, it's the first month, January, the ninth day that they talk about this. So they're citing major changes coming up in the atmosphere and the oceans and changes will start slowly, but, but they think it's going to be a, they think it's going to be a warm season. Yeah. Well, because we're starting to pick up in the cycle uh 25 but it's going to be a bizarre year um so on the middle section here um at least nine more deaths a second major storm hits north europe and um then they're citing 
Um, this is kind of the new normal, just more hurricane type gusts to batter Europe again. And um, it's not good for the, the, so, the not the solar power, but the uh, wind power does not like hurricane winds. OK, and then storm units. We're going to talk more about that. But 122 miles per hour were recorded in England. Amazing storms coming through and they just come out of nowhere because they're solar driven. So here's storm Yelena, um, now bomb cycle Eunice, gigantic wave crashes through passenger ferry windows on, in Germany as worst storm in 30 years sweeps across UK and Europe. So you should see it. I mean, you can see it in slow-mo here. Uh, I mean, in, in paused pictures, but you can see the storm come right through the windows. It's that powerful. So 95 mile per hour winds, 120 people have died in heavy rains and devastating mudslides and floods in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro and de Janeiro. And it's, it's getting worse, people. And you can say, well, we've always had storms. No, they're getting worse. And I'll try to prove it. So storms, disasters, and misery across the world. So here's a Chicago storm, and the band goes right through um, uh, Kansas and Missouri and Iowa and Illinois and part of Wisconsin and Michigan, and then it heads out east, and it's brutal. And I've been cold up here in Minnesota lately. And by the way, my laptop is fixed, so I'm kind of excited about that. So anyway, um, people, 115 million Americans are suffering from this storm that's engulfing us. And then, oh, I want to go back to that, that Madison, 39 vehicles involved in a winter crash in Marathon County. So that's um, Wausau of Wisconsin. And so not a good time to be involved in driving in Wausau area. Wow. So we do the philosophy of the end of days. We try to tie things together logically. OK, we use the Bible. We use real prophecy and we use the news. We're going to use a lot of Isaiah today and some Revelation. My theory has always been that things go linearly, okay, through Revelation and that we're in the seals right now and they're birth pangs. And then we just continue on through the trumpets and then continue on through the bowls. And I don't believe in imminence because it's not in the Bible. And I don't believe in the pre-trib rapture because it's really not in the Bible either. And so everything should be observed and verified. And so once you hit seal seven, you just go on to the trumpets. So anyway, the main thing is, and also it's kind of cool because it, if you divide 2000 years, which is 30 common era until about now, by 40 weeks, say, you would have a Yovel cycle, a Jubilee cycle of 50. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I don't cover Canada because I hope the Canadians win out on this and get their freedom, but it's too much information. It's overwhelming. And there are other guys that are covering this and, and doing the, the feeds all the time. The main thing is this poor older lady was run over by the horses. They put the blinders on the horses to run over the people. Trudeau is a miserable person. What I want to show you is that this is the first horseman part of it. Now it's been going on for 50 years, but I want you to see that it's ethnos epi ethnos. It's people group, liberal versus people group, conservative or people group nuts versus those that are logical or people group that just hates people group. That's ethnos epi ethnos. And that is found in Matthew 24, the, the phrase ethnos epi ethnos. But it's also found in the first seal. Look, I and there in front of me was a white horse and its rider had a bow. He only had the bow, but he didn't have any arrows. Notice that. And he was given a crown, but it's a Stephanos. So it's a wreath. It's it's a very simplistic Olympic type wreath. And and he was uh, he rode off to conquer and to conquer uh, as a conqueror. So the main thing is that's what's going on right now. We have these regional battles between people groups, ethnos, epi, ethnos. Seal number two, Russian bear stocks corrupt Ukraine. It's been going on for years with Iraq and with um Afghanistan, but now I don't talk about this. I have a, a guy that I like named uh, Rabbi Monty Judah, but he every week he's talking about another war that's supposed to happen and they never happen for years. So I don't do it. Okay. The main thing is that Russia might invade the Ukraine. They might only take a few areas. They've already taken Crimea. And it's not that big of a deal, but they're, Biden wants this because it's a wag the dog time frame where um, if, if there's inflation and other problems, he can blame it on Russia. So another horse went out and the red one and the rider was given power to take peace away from the earth and to make people slaughter each other. He was given a shorter sword. It's a, it's a Makira, so it's a great one, but it's just a regular killing sword. Okay. And I argue that is Basileia, Epi Basileia. That's kingdom versus kingdom. And you're seeing that too. It started east of Jerusalem once again in Iraq and Afghanistan and it's moving forward with the red horse. 
the next one is going to be limo and we're feeling this right now as inflation and food prices are high and going higher the strategist says and so used vehicles are through the roof gasoline is through the roof even higher actually now rental cars transportation hotel rooms furniture household energy up by 14.7 percent we notice that in europe it's worse I, I don't like citing this lady because I don't know if she's real or not, but her name is Baba Vanga. And she uh, prophesied that in 2022, the world would experience an increase in natural catastrophes, including tsunamis, earthquakes, earthquake, uh, hurricanes, and bushfires. Um, she's a clairvoyant. Uh, hit with a bout of disastrous floods, uh, lethal virus in Siberia, lack of drinking water. We're seeing that plague of locusts in India. Um, the black horse held in his hand a pair of scales. Then I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living beings saying two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, six pounds of barley for the same price, but don't damage the oil or the wine. The wealthy are doing just fine. Their oil and wine is just fine. The wheat and the barley for us, the poor people, uh, we're, we're noticing inflation we're noticing problems and it's going to get 10 times worse they're not reporting how bad this is so just keep in mind that's the third seal here's more this is bear why are they involved in our crops but bear warns of more glyphs of fate shortages and here's how severe the situation could be this spring farmers are going to have a tough time planting they don't have enough herbicide, fertilizer, fungicide, insecticide, but it's mostly herbicide and fertilizer. So it's looking brutal for farmers this year. So are they going to have difficulty sourcing their inputs for the 2022 season? Can they afford it? Why are they going to plant? Europe has next to no gas left, according to Gazprom. This is an RT article. The EU, uh, EU has used up 95% of the gas that it stored last summer, and now they're going to be empty, and it's going to cost them a lot of money, and Russia doesn't feel like giving them any gas because they're trying to start a war. Basically, it's the NATO situation where the Ukraine wants to join NATO and then have missiles right on Russia's doorstep, and Russia says, no, we don't want that. It would be like having Cuba armed right now with, with new sitting there ready to pounce on Miami okay so just keep that in mind that this is the third seal and that's what's happening that black horseman is riding and I believe that started in 2012 seal 2 started in 2001 or 2003 and seal 1 feels like it started in 1967 as the uh, uh, the Israelis handed back the Temple Mount and so uh, you've got the neocons down below there the good guys that uh, conquered the Temple Mount but handed back the temple area and and then the third seal is you're seeing it already you're seeing global issues with food and and other conflicts so wow okay the fourth seal is coming up we aren't really seeing it yet um but that would be the death of 1.4 1.944 billion deaths okay and from four different plagues so the fifth seal is going to be um uh, uh martyrdom and then the sixth seal, we'll talk about where that is, solar activity and other things like that. But first, I want to talk about what time it is. We have three different scenarios for what's going to happen going forward. We're in Adar 1, and we just had a beautiful full moon. We're going to have an Adar 2. But if, if for some odd reason the barley harvest occurred in Israel, we wouldn't have an Adar 2. We would go, now the Orthodox Jews would, but we wouldn't as, as people that monitor the, the, the lunar cycles and monitor the uh, barley harvest. So we're assuming that there won't be a barley harvest that early because that would be literally March 4th, which would be just too early for the barley harvest. So I'm hoping then that we'll have it in April and then we would have Passover in April. But as you can see from scenario one, two, and three, it could be different. So what time is it? Well, we're having Purim here on probably Adar 2, and then we'll have Passover, probably around Friday, April 15th to Saturday. So then the second Passover is listed there too in the website. But things are happening in the world. So we're seeing more sunspots, we're seeing more Aurora Borealis, and we'll probably see a blood red moon at some point in time here, because that is part of the sixth seal sign. So let's dig into the topics a little bit more. Why did the birds fall? from the sky in Mexico. Probably a predator. No, it's not. Uh, maybe 5G. Well, it, it's electric, no doubt about it. So the birds seem to fall in Mexico based on those solar explosions, those CMEs. But here's the same situation. This is in Wales. 200 birds fall dead from the sky. Same basic situation. 
Okay, so we've got plasma penetrations because the magnetosphere is thinned and the sun is kicking off a lot of burps, we'll call them. Okay, that's from the Guardian there. And then I can't remember the source on the right-hand side. Okay, uh, then continuing on, why renewed solar storms threaten to destroy more satellites after Elon Musk's Starlink? So yeah, he lost 40 of his 49 of his low orbiting uh, satellites in a geomagnetic magnetic storm during the same time the birds were dying. So this is like satellite birds to me. And so he lost dozens and dozens of satellites. So 40 of the 49 low orbit satellites were launched February 3rd and they're done. So very interesting. So kind of like birds in their own little way. When you get stuck in that particular area um, and there's a solar storm coming, you're gonna feel it, okay? Uh, whether you're a bird or a plane or a satellite. So what is it? On the left-hand side, upper left, you can see the sun kicking out the burps, either a solar wind or a coronal mass ejection. And the solar winds then hit the Earth via the poles and cause aurora borealis coming from the poles. And then also storms and lightning. Okay, And then you can see on the upper right-hand side, as it hits the Earth, our electromagnetosphere kind of bends and buckles and moves as a result of that. And so then you can see how it comes in through the poles and then you see the aurora borealis, okay? So it's electrical. That's what I'm arguing all the way through that, that the things that you're going to experience going forward, when these storms hit you all of a sudden, it's going to be electrical and it will be an electrical storm too. Okay, once again, you get the CME, it hits the earth, it causes a flux there and then it comes in through the poles and then you see the aurora borealis, okay? And Let's describe it in terms of the sixth seal. Then I watched as he broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake. So once again, as it hits the poles, it drives the energy in, electrical energy in, and then it comes out the fissures. So it'll drive earthquakes, okay? And then the sun turned black as sackcloth worn in morning. I don't know why it would do that, possibly fires. And the full moon became blood red. Okay, the stars fell from heaven to earth just as a fig tree drops its figs. That's probably asteroids because figs would be smaller. Okay, so the stars are big, figs are smaller, I'm, I'm assuming asteroids. When shaken by a strong wind, the sky receded like a scroll being rolled up. That is our electromagnetosphere thinning and every mountain and island was moved. That doesn't mean it's an ELE, an extinction level event. That just means it's not gonna be a pretty situation. But that doesn't mean it's the end either. It just means you go right into the seventh seal and then right into the trumpets after that, okay? Then the Earth's kings, rulers, the generals, the rich, the mighty, Elon Musk, uh, Bill Gates, all those guys, indeed everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in caves and among the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one sitting on the throne and from the fury, that's the word orge again. So that is, um, uh, that is not the exact term used to the bulls um, in Revelation 16. That would be more um, themis. And so this is Orge of the Lamb. So the great day of the fury, Orge has come and who can stand? So it's different than what is described in the bowls of Revelation 16. So it, uh, people always equate that it means fury. Fury means fury. No, it means Orge or Themis. It, it's two different words. And so I'm arguing that Revelation 16 comes later, not at the same exact time as the sixth seal. Six seal windows above have become have been opened. So that is uh, from Isaiah 24, 17 through 21. Terror and pit and trap are upon you. You who are living on the earth, he who flees from the sound of terror will fall into the pit. He who climbs, do you remember from Revelation chapter six, how they wanted to fall, uh, have the rocks fall on them and protect them? Well, that's not gonna work out so well. He who climbs up out of the pit will be caught in the trap. For the windows above, that's the Rome. That's not heaven. That's a level right above our heads and then up to about the moon area, okay? And so that's the Rome, and that would be the electromagnetosphere has been opened. The earth's foundations shake. Okay, you know what that means, that's earthquakes. The earth cracks and breaks open, earthquakes. The earth crumbles to pieces and the earth trembles and tires. the earth staggers to and fro like a trunk. That is um, when your poles shift, that's what that means. So the teeter-tottering, yeah, staggering to and fro like a drunkard, that is the poles shifting. So it's back and forth like a watchman's shelter. It's transgression, weighs heavy upon it. It will fall and not rise again. When that day comes, I and I will punish the armies of high in the Marom. So those are actually fallen angels and the, and the kings of the earth here on earth. So 
he will punish the the um, angels, the fallen angels in the Marom, in the Marom, or from the Marom, in the Marom, okay, and the kings of the earth here on earth. Two different people groups, uh, or angels versus people groups, okay? And so on the left-hand side, you can see swarm probes weakening of Earth's magnetic field, and there's the anomaly. No, it's a hole. It's a huge hole. They call it a dent. It's a hole, and that is described in Isaiah 24, which is the Jewish version of Revelation. Then another picture of the magnetosphere thinning from the coronal holes and, and, and things like that. Um, I'm going to give you Isaiah 34 and see if it sounds like that. Okay, for Adonai is angry at every nation, furious with all their armies. He has completely destroyed them. He handed them over for food to slaughter. Their slain will be thrown out. The stench will rise from their corpses. The mountains will flow from, with their blood. The whole host of heaven will decompose. The heavens themselves will be rolled up like a scroll. Doesn't that sound like what we're experiencing now with the magnetosphere? All their array will wither away like a withering grape leaf that falls from a vine or a withered fig from a fig tree. That's Isaiah 34. So do you see a standard feel with all of those verses of what's going to happen? The magnetosphere will thin and it'll cause all sorts of problems on the earth. So according to Ben Davidson and many others, we're heading into solar cycle 25 and we're going to go up in CMEs. So whatever you're experiencing now in January, February is going to go up even higher. And so the shields are down, the CMEs are up and extreme weather is dead ahead. That's five years of it. Here's the cycle so you can see how it's starting to go up and it's really going up quite quickly. And we should go up and peak around late 2025 or 26, okay? And that's just the cycle. And so it's getting busier and it seems to be one year ahead of schedule. So there's no global minimum yet. But when we hit global minimum, it will be ugly. You know, around 2030, 2032, really ugly, really cold, especially up here in Minnesota. So the atmosphere is losing its shield, Ben Davidson. We studied the effects of, of, uh, uh, of pole reversal would have on Earth's electric fields and how that would affect the cold atmosphere source plasma in the near Earth space environment known as the plasma sphere. We find that the stability of the plasma sphere is highly dependent on the shape of the magnetic field, which is weakening. And that magnetic field shapes lacks a symmetry around Earth's rotational axis, leads to stronger erosions of Earth's plasma sphere and leaves Earth's atmosphere more vulnerable to changes in magnetic field strength. That's bad. And pole shift too. So um, uh, basically what we should expect to see then is more lightning strikes on the right hand side and more CMEs will trigger massive coronal rain in the solar atmosphere. It's not going to be a pretty few years here as we're less protected by the magnetosphere and from UV and things like that. So more lightning strikes. And also it's not just the earth, it's other plants too. Their atmospheres are changing right now. And so record lightning. So equatorial ionosphere should display signal, ozone depletion over the tropics, and then record lightning. So get ready for it. And the, there's one other article that I wanted you to see with the folly of focusing on uncertainty. Quit worrying about uncertainty and sea level projections. If the sea rises by six inches in the next 50 years, who cares? It's the magnetosphere that matters right now. And, and it's really being prepared for global uncertainty of food, inflation, and, and world leaders that are just bent out of shape. They're just ridiculous. So um, emphasizing uncertainty is misguided for two main reasons. First, a growing body of research shows that providing uncertainty estimates to decision makers actually decreases the usability of climate projections. Yeah, so there you go, okay? All right, so where are we right now? We're in the birth pangs. We're, we've gone through seal one, we've experienced seal two, we're seeing seal, seal three get bad. Each one is still increasing, as I've shown you before. Seal four is death, a lot of death, death in Hades. Then we go into the tribulation at, after seal seven. Then we go into great tribulation after the midpoint. And the two witnesses would be during the first half of the great tribulation. I mean, the first of the, the first three and a half years. So my predictions, increased wars, ethnic wars, okay, ethnos, epi, ethnos, increased crime, increased national wars is the second seal, increased food scarcity, economic upheaval, those are the third seals, increased plagues and deaths, the fourth seal, increased false prophets, and increased persecution of the believers, that's Matthew 24 and Revelation 6, the fifth seal, then increased earthquakes, increased cosmic storms, that's Revelation 6 and the sixth seal, 
everybody's asleep, all 10 virgins, so somebody's going to wake up sooner or later. There should be increased wickedness, of course. Love, grow, love will grow cold, increased uncertainty, fears, and then mental health devolves. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. That's Luke 21. And look at that horrible article below it. Mom decapitate, decapitates six-year-old son and dog after the devil spoke to her. Horrible. Six-year-old boy and the dog, too. But And, and she said the, the devil, and she claimed that she wasn't mentally ill. Uh, okay, so howl, because the day of Adonai is ha at hand. Destruction coming from the Sh Shaddai, that's the all-sufficient one. And every arm will hang limp, and everyone's courage will melt away. They will be gripped by panic, seized by pain and agony, writhing like a woman in labor, looking aghast at each other, fa faces aflame. Here comes the day of Adonai, full of cruelty, rage. That's the word themo that I talked about before, hot fury. That's Orge again, like I mentioned. Uh, to desolate the earth and destroy the sinners in it. For the stars, the constellations in the sky will no longer give their light. The sun will be dark when it rises and the moon will no longer shine. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will end the arrogance of the proud and humble the insolence of tyrants. I will make humans rarer than gold, scarcer than Ophir's pure gold. This is why I make the heavens tremble and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath, that's Themo again, of Adonai Tezvod on the day of his fierce orge anger. That's Isaiah 13, 6 through 13. So you need to get ready for a wedding because that's what's happening. We're getting prepared and that means you need to clean your garments. That means faith, but it also means doing good things. So maybe you need to support the Canadians or other people that are being persecuted right now and be, be prepared for persecution coming against us. So that's it. That's my get together for today. And this is Beth Hesed. Thank you very much. Be blessed and take care.